Today, we thank God for the worship and just as we've been blessed with the singing and just being taken in God's presence. Tukiwa sehemu hii, tukija kanisani ni mahali ambaye tumeomba mungu tukamuambia hapa tumekuja kukuabudu buwana asifiwe. Na tunafungua mioe yetu ili buwana asungumuze pamoja na asina asanteni sana kwa kutu weka na kutupeleka mbele za Mungu. Wiki uliopita nilikuwa kule Kitale na kanisa la AIC Nuru wanatuma salamu zao kwenu muzipokee. Tulikuwa na vijana wengi kutoka kanisa hili ambao walikuwa umeenda kwa engagement ya rafiki wao na tukawa tukashiriki sehemu hiyo. So leo tungependa tuongee juu ya neno kuchukua sehemu yetu kama wala ambao ni wa familia wa Mungu taking your position and status as a member of God's family seriously and I want to repeat the word seriously taking your position and status as a member of God's family seriously I know that this is a subject of being a member of God's family that you may have heard many times. You've actually memorized some verses and we are going to go through them today. And probably you are sure and you do know that you are a member of God's family. But have we taken that position seriously in the way we act, in the way we approach life, in the way we interact on day to day? I do believe that as a country we are in a critical time, particularly now as we go, as the national elections are right at hand, this is the time where the church will need to shine. This is a time where our Christian faith has to be put in action and be very visible so that our faith will inspire others to say, if this is how the Christian fraternity respond to situations, we would like to be like them. And that is my prayer as we go through this message today. <clears throat> the first part that I would like us to see is when you read in the book of Genesis, as we consider this idea of taking our position and status as members of God's family seriously, we want to ask, when God created the human race, what did he have in mind? Wakati mungu walipo umba mwanadamu, walikuwa na nini katika mawazo yake juu ya mwanadamu? When he created Adam and Eve, what was their role? What did he in his own divine plan anticipate that Adam and Eve will do? When you read Genesis 1:26 through 28 this is what the word of God says then God said let us make man in our own image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth so God created man in his own image and in the image of God he created them male and female he created them then god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on earth and moves on earth the first thing that we see when we read this passage of scripture is that the human race was created to have a unique role and a unique relationship with God. Mwanadamu wakati Mungu alipomuumba alikuwa na kazi ambaye alikuwa anampangia na pia alikuwa amemuumba ili wawe na uhusiano wa kipekee ambaye wale ile vitu vyote ambaye ilikuwa imeumbwa hawangeweza kuwa nayo. So as a human race we have a unique role and a relationship with God. According to Genesis 
uh, 126 through 28. Now all of us know this, that when God created Adam and Eve, the thing that set them apart was that other than, you know, with, in comparison to the animals and everything else that God had created is that they had the spirit. So a human being has the body, the soul, and the spirit. And so they are able to connect and relate with God because of the spirit that God put in them. So that while you have this physical body, there is the living soul which has the spirit of God in that allows you to have that relationship and communication with God. That is very clear when you read other portions of scripture that expounds uh, who we are as a human race. And apparently from this passage, we understand that, that as we are being created and made in the image of God, which is very different, and in the likeness of God, which is different from any other creation that God had done, he also had a specific role that the human race will have dominion, will oversee, will rule over the earth. And so as he creates them in his own image, he gives them a role. A theologian, actually a few of them have argued and said, while we have no issues with the idea that we are different because of the spirit that God has put in us, but that when God was crafting and creating a human being, his idea was that the human race will be my image wherever I put them. And if you read the old literature at that time, you know, I just uh, in the old, old literature during the Old Testament, you would see that kings during their time, because there were no roads and all that, they would build images across the country. You know, they erect these big images that would represent them. So when you are in that place, when you see the image, you know the king of this place is so and so because of the image that has been planted there. In the places of worship too, in other religions you would see, they would put an image of their God and that becomes kind of the representation. In this passage, the idea that God creates us in his own image is very profound. It actually says that you and I, as he has created us, is you and I are a clear representation of the creator. Praise God. That is deep. That when you see yourself, just look at your neighbor. <laughs> when you see that neighbor, he or she is the representation, the image of God. He says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish. So as he creates man in his own image and in his own likeness, he now gives them power so that wherever man is, and by man here I use female and male, wherever they are, they are the representation of God and his dominion over the earth. They are the representation of God and his dominion over the earth so that when the creation sees man, they see the image of the almighty God planted over. Now, the human race did not only have a unique role and relationship with God, but the status of the human race is definitely higher than all creation. God elevates the status of the human race. Mungu anainua ile hali ya mwanadamu kuliko vyote ambazo aliumba. Na ukiona katika mstari huu ambao tumesoma uh, Mungu katika hali ya uhusiano wake na na, na mwanadamu 
sio tu kwamba anasema huyu ndio atani atatoa at, at, at sura yango my, my image lakini anakuwa pia na anaongea naye he blesses them and when you read the entire you know following chapter when god comes in the cool of the day and finds adam having sinned you realize that there was a practice that god had a very intimate relationship with the human race i would believe like in the morning god would pass by and say adam how are you maisha iko namna gani unaendeleaje that intimate relationship that when you see now in genesis 2 when the fall comes akija na anampata adam katika hali ambayo alikuwa naye wanaongea wanakuwa na uhusiano so ilikuwa ni mapenzi ya mungu kwamba sio tu kwamba mwanadamu awe representation yake bali pia wawe na uhusiano wa karibu wawe jamii have a family a close family relationship that they are intimate with the human race i am you glad that you are that person but in that status that god wanted the human race to occupy he places him above all creation that the psalmist wonders and says the part that we read he says what is man that you are mindful of him the son of man that you care for him you have made him a little lower than god and crowned him with glory and honor you have made him ruler over the works of your hands you've put everything under his feet church there is nothing in all creation that has a higher status than humanity there is nothing in all creation that is more godlike than humanity in god's design the human race was created to represent him our actions and all that we do should represent our creator yale mambo yote ambayo tunafanya kwa sababu mungu alipanga kwamba kupitia wewe dunia itajua vile mungu wako na kwa hiyo kwa yale matendo yetu yote ambayo tunafanya tunastahili katika akili na mpango wa Mungu akiumba mwanadamu iweze ikaonyeshe Mungu kwa uumbaji wake ili jinzia na vile Mungu angeonekana anapitia wewe tunajua kwamba Mungu ni upendo Mungu ni amani Mungu ni mwema Mungu ni mtakatifu Mungu wetu ni Mungu ambaye anapeana our god is love is the prince of peace he is just he is good he is gracious he is merciful he is holy he is glorious he is patient he is kind he is generous what we see in our current world when you just put on the news does not reflect this picture that we see in genesis in god's original intention for you and i that the universe and everything that is in it should be able to see the image of god in us should be able to see the likeness of god in us and say our god is good and give glory to god what we see is very different what we see in the world is hatred we see violence we see injustice we see racism we see tribalism this does not represent god it doesn't represent him and if you doubt go back to your history see what happened to the jews when millions of them were slaughtered by their neighbors people that they have lived with they have worked with if you still doubt come close home here in rwanda and see how two tribes that speak one language slaughtered themselves in fact the immediate neighbor would betray the other one when people would run to the church those who worship together would betray the other one what happened to the human race what happened to the human race we do know and i'll come back to it that after adam sinned 
things changed. But we'll also see that that has been redeemed by Christ. But as the church of Christ in this century, as the people of God living in this century, who God in his own way, and we'll see that, has made us members of his family, we've got to go back and plow back and say, if this was the intention of God, that we should reflect his image, and that he has created us in his own likeness, so that the world can see who God is, and they can see those values that God so much endear, that the love of God should flow through those that he has created and called to himself, that when they think about injustice in the world, they say, no, there is a body that has justice, and that is the, 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 the body of Christ. When they need love, they can experience on as a part of who upendo kutoka kwa Christo, kwa wa Christo. Mungu katika hali hiyo kutumba sisi na katika hali hiyo ya mpango yetu kama wanadamu tuweze kuwa wakilishi wake hapa duniani. Ana tuita sisi ambaye um, tumeomjua yeye ili tuweze kuwa waka, wakilishi wake kamili katika dunia hii tusije tukaanguka kama adamu so that we go that law so that we lose the position that god had given us that god has so much in his plan for the world set for us that we lose that position and we lose it when we follow the ways of the world we lose it when we think that what the other people are doing is okay, we lose it when we don't understand who we are. My prayer today as we continue with this word is that you will critically think about your position as a representative of Christ, of God in this world, and that your status that God has given you is very, very, very different. That you will not stoop low and be a perpetrator of hatred, of violence, of injustice, of racism, of tribalism in any way and form. So that as the world looks at the church, they are able to say, I see men and women who love their God. And I see the virtues and the values that they represent coming out of their lives, and we thank God for them. So, as members of God's family, God not only created the human race as a representative and rulers of his creation, we do know that when sin came, Wakati dhambi ilipo kuja na Adam alipo kosea, tunajua mambo ya liaribika kiasi. Na ndiyo tunaye haya mambo ambaye nimesema. Watu wanachukiana, kuna ukabila, kuna mambo mengi ambaye inaendelea ambaye aileti utukufu kwa mungu. Lakini mungu hakuacha hile mpango wake kusema, kwa sababu Adam alikosea, hile mpango yangu ya kujiundia watu, ambao wataniakilisha hakuacha huo mpango aliendelea na mpango wake kusema hata ingawaje Adam alikosea na wale waliomfuata wakatenda dhambi na kufanya yale maovu ambaye haikuwa inastahili jina la Mungu akasema nitajiundia kikundi kingine ambaye hawa kupitia hawa nitawaleta karibu zaidi nami ili waweze kuwa wangu zaidi na hilo kikundi ndiyo kanisa ndiyo tunasema kwa neno la pili kwamba through Christ we are members of God's family through Christ we are members of God's family from genesis God's intention was to have a family relationship with humanity because of sin as i have said 
Jesus now comes and makes that possible through his death and resurrection. Jesus is the full image bearer of God. He is the most human of any human who has ever lived. By faith, we too participate in the restored humanity. Bwana sifiwe. Kwa sababu ya kupoteza ile hali ambaye Mungu alikuwa ameweka ya mwanadamu kwamba aweze kumwakilisha kwa sababu ya maumbile yake Mungu hakuacha huo mpango na kupitia Kristo kuja kuchukua mwili ya mwanadamu na kufa na kufufuka kwake Mungu akasema sasa kupitia hiyo mfano ambayo Kristo ametupatia ninawaleta wengine wapya ili waweza wakachukua ile sehemu ambaye nilikuwa natarajia bwana asifiwe it's been god's desire through the time from creation that he establishes a family relationship with us bwana asifiwe imekuwa ni mpango wa mungu kuwa kwamba wewe na mimi mwanadamu ambaye ni kiumbe chake waweze kuwa jamii na Mungu. Najua hii sasa nyingine ni ngumu kuweza kuprocess kwa akili. Kwa sababu Mungu tunajua ni mkuu, tukisoma juu ya Mungu hata hatuwezi kuelewa kwa akili yetu. Lakini huyo Mungu ambaye hatuwezi kuelewa kwa akili zetu isipokuwa yale tuna, tunasoma kwa neno lake, it's the same God who is saying you John, you Mary. Wewe Nataka huwe mtoto wangu bwana asifiwe. <laughs> Nataka huwe wa familia yangu. And I will care and treat you like a royal family member. And this is what he says in Hebrews 2:10 through 12. Katika Waibrania 10 na uh, Waibrania 2 uh, mstari wa 10 hadi 12 inasema hivi In bringing many sons and daughters to glory it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered and then he says in verse 11 both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family not that are of the same family so jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters he says i will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly i will sing your praises praise god so hebrews tells us that in god's plan to redeem and bring the family relationship with humanity Christ had to come and conquer death and then through his humanity he becomes the firstborn so that wale wote ambao tunamfuata sasa sisi ni wana wa Mungu kupitia Kristo ambaye ametupeleka kuingia katika familia ya Mungu In fact Jesus says in John 1:12 through 13 today we we'll read several Verses he says to all who received him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of God born not of a natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will but born of God praise God wale waliompokea aliwapa uwezo kufanyika wana wa Mungu na sio kwa njia ya kidunia ama kwa mapenzi ya baba na mama lakini ni kwa kuzaliwa na Mungu. Church there is something that happens when one meets Christ. Paul says we become a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. A miracle happens when a person believes in Jesus Christ. Because of what Christ has done, it's not only that their sins are forgiven but they are adapted to be sons and daughters of God. Things change. Sometimes we stay and live as though we are ordinary people. 
you are not ordinary people. Turn to your neighbor and say you are no ordinary person. Something has happened in you from the heavens that God has done that when you accept Christ, your status changed completely. Wakati unapo muamini Christo, hali yako inabadilika. Sio tu kusamehewa dhambi, bali unageuzwa na unabadilishi wa kuwa mwana wa mungu. Ili kwamba ile hali ya enye mungu alikuwa meumbia kusudi ya kumbwa mwanadamu inatimika. Lakini sasa inatimika hata zaidi kwa sababu sasa unapewewa, unainuliwa zaidi kuwa mwana wa mungu. Na ndiyo Yohana pia, huyu Yohana katika Yohana wa kwanza, tatu, moja, hadi mbili, anasema hivi. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now that we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Praise God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Ni ajabu kwamba mungu mkuu na yawana anasema hii. Tasama upendo mkuu ambaye mungu wa mbinguni. Anatupenda kiasi kwamba anatupatia heshi makuu na kutuleta tuwe wana wa mungu. Kwamba sisi hambaye hatukuwa kitu tumeinuliwa kiasi hicho kwamba sisi ni wana wa mungu. Na anasema dunia haiwezi kajua hiyo. When you walk people will not know. But you are special. You are special. In God's eyes, na hii ni maumbi yangu wa ndugu na dada ambazo mmekuja kwa ibada hii, kwamba ukitembea popote, mungu akufunulie, uweze kujua wewe ni nani, kwamba katika macho ya mungu minguni, hana kuangalia wewe kama muana wake. Very, very special person. You are no ordinary human being. You are a child of God. You are a son and a daughter of the royal family, a kingdom of God. And in Ephesians 3, 14 through 19, he says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth. You see, that's amazing. Our family is not only here on earth, but our family is also where? In heaven. Our family in heaven and on earth is named that he would grant you according to his riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Praise God. The subject of being member, a member of God's family through Christ is everywhere in Scripture. I will read to you several verses, and I've chosen several of them, many being left just to bring to us the point home. Do not see yourself as the world sees you. Bwana sifiwe. Usijangalie vile dunia inakuangalia. 
ujiangalie vile Mungu anavyokuangalia bwana asifiwe view your life from god's perspective of who you are from god's perspective he says in my creation i have trees i have giraffes i have everything but because of the fall i lost that relationship now through christ i have redeemed a people for myself and they are just no the people but they are members of my family they are my children they are my sons and daughters they belong in fact first peter puts it so well 29 he says but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people of god's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellence of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so from god's perspective you are a special group of people church we need to be fully aware of our family position in christ sometimes we live as strangers in our own family we also neglect our responsibilities because we do not know who we are as members of god's family god has placed before us privileges obligations and inheritance rights as his children they are right there for you yale mungu ametuwekea kama wana wake ni mengi ni mengi ya ajabu kwamba hata sisi wenyewe hatuwezi kuya 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 hesabu in fact uh, tunajua kwamba wakorintho wa, wa, wa kwanza mbili tisa inasema but as it is written what no eye has seen no ear heard no the heart of man imagine what god has prepared for those who love him in other words the things that god has in store for us we can't even imagine or process because he loves you and i dearly to him to him as the creator of the heavens and the earth you are special you are a child and a daughter of the most, most high king so we do know that we have privileges that no one has our identity is in god we are known by the name of christ in fact the church was known in antioch uh, or the christians were known as uh, first as christians because they were identified with christ we experience the love of god and share the same love in ways that no one else in this world can while i'm about to mempokea yesu tunapokea upendo wa mungu kiazi na kwa jinsia ambaye dunia nzima haiwezi kampokea kwa sababu sisi tumemjua na kwa sababu mungu ni pendo tukiuliza yeye upendo wake anatujaza upendo wake mungu katika hali ya maisha yetu anatupatia yale vitu ambaye tunaitaji kwa sababu sisi na watoto wake the bible says he promises to take care of our needs uh, for the gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows what you need we are also able to talk to god and relate to him as a good and loving father what a privilege kwamba wewe na mimi tunaweza kuongea na mungu wetu kama baba wetu ambaye anatupenda take a little time and reflect when you go to prayer and speak to god how do you speak to him wakati unapoenda maombi kuomba mbele za mungu nilikuwa siku moja na muhubiri mwingine ambaye alikuwa amehubiri miaka nyingi na ile nishangaza sana vile aliongelesha mungu alienda tu we were going to pray and so he just went and says father I'm before you. Na akamongelesha kama anamongelesha uh, ameka hapa. <laughs> and I thought this is amazing. <laughs> Huyo amemjua Mungu wake kwamba Mungu sio mbali. Kwamba Mungu pengine hamsikii. 
kwamba pengine Mungu hamuone anajua kwamba Mungu ni baba wake bwana asifiwe na vile baba aliye na uhusiano mzuri na watoto wake wakiongea wanaangaliana kwa furaha na wanaongea pamoja hivyo ndivyo Mungu ametupatia hiyo ruhusa kama kanisa lake wala ambao wamempenda yeye na wanamjua yeye they can go before him in confidence and speak to him as a child of that family also we can relate with him as a good and loving father he understands us and has compassion he shows compassion to us as psalm 103:13 says as a father shows compassion to his children so the lord shows compassion to those who fear him and of course we know that he forgives our sin as matthew 6:33 says church Christ has restored our status and brought us to be family members in God's family. So when the fall happened wakati ambao Adam na Eve walipoanguka Mungu kwa mpango wake kasema nitarejeshia uhusiano wangu na mwanadamu. Na uhusiano wa kwanza ni kutuleta sisi kuwa wana wa Mungu. Uhusiano wa kwanza ni kutuleta sisi katika jamii ya Mungu familia ya Mungu. Na ya pili ambaye anatenda ambaye ni ajabu na naamini tukiiweka katika maanani itabadilisha dunia hii yetu ni kwamba akituleta kama jamii ya Mungu anatuweka katika uhusiano na wenzetu. And so as members of God's family we have more in common than any other relationship in the world. So Christ uh, restores our relationship uh, vertically but also horizontally so that as we relate to God as our father we have to relate amongst ourselves as children of the most high God praise God that is his plan and desire that those who call him by his name those who are members of his family with a restored relationship in knowing God not only enjoy that privilege of getting to know him and to love him but they also enjoy the privilege of being a member of a larger family a family that he has bought with his own blood and so 1 Corinthians 12:13 to 14 says for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body whether Jews or Greeks whether slaves or free we have all been made to drink into one spirit for in fact the body is not one member but many listen to ephesians 4 4 to 6 it says there is one body and one spirit just as you are called in one hope of all our calling one lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all in all. Bwana sifiwe. <laughs> Kwamba sisi ambao tumeingizwa kuwa jamii ya Kristo. We are now members of a larger body that is one. And that body is what we call the church, which is one body. And all of us share in one spirit. All of us have one hope. All of us have one Lord. All of us have one faith. All of us have one baptism. All of us have one God and Father of all who is above all, through all and in all. Bwana sifiwe. Kuna usiano ambaye inashinda hiyo usiano kwa dunia hii. I shared one time and said with my brothers, probably those who were born physically in the same house, we only share the blood relationship. And probably one roof. You, you just share the father and the mother, that is the, the blood relationship. What else do you share with them? Very limited, isn't it? Unless they believe in Christ, then now you have all this. So God is calling us and saying he's building 
a new family and a family that will last forever, Bwana Sifiwe. A family not only that will be here on earth, enjoying that relationship, and that's why when you read in the scripture, it says pray for one another, you know, support one another, do everything. The one another message in the scripture is so strong because it says, now you are members of one family. Don't look at each other. Usiangalia yule mungina useme huyo ni muruandiz. Huyo ni huyo, uh, hii kabila huyo, no. Yesu anasema hiyo yote imefutwa bwana asifiwe. While they have that identity in their upbringing, but now he's lifting and elevating our identity to a new status. And he's saying, I'm building a new family that will be eternal, that will last forever. So that those who are born of the Spirit of God are brothers and sisters, not only with each other, but their firstborn brother is Jesus Christ. And he's building this family that will last forever. There was a revival in the early 70s. And those people, when they believed in Christ, na wakamuamini Yesu kwamba mewasamea dhambi, na wamekua wana wa mungu. You know, when they meet a person who is born again, they had no doubt, this is my brother and sister, Bwana Sifiwe. Anamchikua anasema bwana asifiwe ndugu na ni ndugu wa kweli bwana asifiwe. <laughs> Huyo anajua ni ndugu wa kweli kwa sababu amenunuliwa na damu ya mwana kondoo. And they would celebrate, they would go. Sam one mzee was telling me tungaweza enda Uganda, tunaenda kwa, kwa, kwa nyumba ya ndugu. <laughs> na tunakaa, tunakula pamoja, tunasherekea pamoja kwa sababu ni ndugu kamili bwana asifiwe. There's nothing about kwamba huyu ni mteso, huyu ni kabila hii ametoka huku huyu ni ndugu katika Kristo na hakuna nyingine ambaye inashinda hiyo kwa sababu tuko na vitu nyingi ya kipamoja kuliko yale mengine ambaye dunia inayo and daniel says this ile nasema kwamba sio tu kwamba itakuwa ni hapa danieli 7:13 through 14 says daniel sees the future and he says this is what i see i was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. Listen to this, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. <laughs> Tell your brother and sister, I have a future with you. <laughs> I have a future with you. <laughs> and then tell him or her also, I'm more related to you than anyone else. <laughs> we are related in Christ and in a relationship that is superior to any other relationship in, in, in the world. We also have a future together that as the body of Christ, we will live together. And, 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 and Daniel sees and says, itakuwa ni watu kutoka makabila zote, katika uh, nations zote, all languages, all peoples of the world who have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Church, how are you taking your responsibility, your status as a member of God's family? Are other relationships more superior than that relationship that God has given you? As we pray and prepare our nation for elections, the church should rise and show that there is a way we can live that is above the way of this world. That people from different communities consider themselves deeply brothers and sisters that that is their first relationship. The others are important, but this is the most important because Christ purchased them for that purpose, that they show the family of God, that in their life, they represent Christ. I know we do fall short. Mara nyingi tunanguka kwa sababu wakati dhambi ilikuja, ikatuangusha. 
na ikatuingiza katika hili hali ambaye tunaangalia maisha ya hapa chini and so tribalism becomes an issue what nepotism all the isms become an issue kwa sababu ya hali ya kuangusha lakini leo Yesu anatuinua anatuambia sisi ni wana wa Mungu bwana asifiwe tumekombolewa na sisi ni watu wa taifa la Mungu na ni watu moja katika Kristo na dunia inastahili kujua Mungu kupitia sisi Napenda tusimame tuombe pamoja tukimuuliza Mungu atusaidie tuishi kama watu wake. Tukimwambia atusaidie tuweze kuondoka kwa sehemu ambaye pengine tumeanguka na tumeishi ambaye haileti ai uh, sifa kwake. That God will help us to know that through Christ we are a new creation. Through Christ we belong to the family of God that you belong together as one body you have one spirit one hope one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all you have a common destiny and my prayer for you today is that you tell god god i want to live like a child of god i want the world to see that this is who god made us to be to represent him that in his likeness and in his image he formed us that through Christ then we can become that image of God to the world. If that is your prayer today that you would like God to reflect through your life that he can be seen, just raise your hand as we pray together.